And now without any more, I do, would you like to come forward, the fancy man from Conway, who is going to talk to us about something dear to a lot of our hearts, and I see a lot of people from Poplar Hill. And, uh, they're all of us, they're section <laughs> I think you have the whole congregation here tonight. Uh, Bill Burnett, who is just a cousin right. of my husband, or a second cousin of my husband, I believe, so it's not that distant, um, has put this program on in Conway, and it was so well received that we just had to put it on again for some Conway people who have come and we're welcoming you. And for anyone who I, to whom I don't know, welcome. But I want to mention this is the first time I've been up here in this newly renovated town hall. So we are thrilled to have you here with us. And the audiovisual materials that you're going to be privileged to see are a donation of Friends of Town Hall, plus we have loads of donations all over the place. We were thrilled with the support for this town hall. So enjoy the program. It's all yours, sir. Well, thank you for inviting me. I'm Bill Burnett, as you said. Uh, we live, I live on the Ashfield Conway town line. And our family, I'm a seventh generation. My sister's back there knitting. She and I are running the farm. Uh, seventh generation. And our family's been there since 1781. And the first Burnett came over from Scotland. And he was a doctor. And he was inscripted to be a doctor over here. And he didn't want to do that. So they got in near conflicting reports, either Cheverton, Rhode Island, or New Bedford, Mass. But he jumped ship and hightailed it. He ended up in Warwick, Mass, out in the woods as a wanted man. And he never, uh, it was before Warwick was even settled. You know, it was a guest province or whatever. And when Warwick was incorporated, I read that there was some squatters living on the land, and presumably it was probably Robert. But he, he had several sons and everything, but one son was Archibald, and he sold land in Warwick and bought the farm in 1781 in Conway. And I think it was about 55 acres, more or less, of course, back then. And in 1765, Ashford was incorporated. Conway wasn't formed until 1767. So when Ashford was incorporated, they were neighboring to Deerfield. And there had been a boundary dispute been going on for 20 some odd years. And the boundary ended up being changed and the town line got moved 100 rods to the east. So our thinking is because the, the house, the original homestead, the town line runs to the chimney in the house. So half the house is half and half is economy. And my thinking is that probably the, town, the house was there prior to the town in the town of Deerfield and then ended up being half in Ashfield and half in Deerfield, and then Conway was incorporated in 1767, and that's how we ended up. So then in 1760, uh, 1766, Ashfield petitioned to have a road to their town from Deerfield, or it ended up being from Hatfield, but they were just kind of stranded out there in the wilds. Mm -hmm. And this is how the 1766 road from Hatfield, which is now Waitley, to Ashfield was formed. And it's kind of turned into quite a project. You know, over the years, the farm grew and family grew, but they owned over a thousand acres at one point. And it's now down to about 300 acres, or just shy of 300 acres. Um, over the years, they did logging, of course, with all, the, all that land. They raised sheep. Uh, they did dairy, did maple syrup, which we still do. Um, they also grew peppermint. And in the hills of Ashfield Conway, wasn't really great soil for growing peppermint. So in the early 1800s, I think it was like five families from the Ashfield Conway area, with one of the Burnett's being one of them, they moved to Phelps, New York. And great growing conditions and all that, it became the peppermint capital. And there's still peppermint being grown out there today. I'm involved in the town, I volunteer with the Ashfield Fire Department, with Conway Fire Department, and I've become a member of the Historical Commission, and that's how this whole project really, really came to be. So, so as you can see, I put this on two years ago in Conway for the 250th, and received some grant money from the Culture Council, so it was a big benefit to us. 
This is just a topographical map of the Conway area. It really doesn't look like much of anything. That's the town of Conway with the yellow lines. That's all the boundary lines within the town. Lock lines? Yes, everybody's boundaries. Amazing. It's really amazing. So with this, you know, we were able to do our locking until we we're on so-and-so's land, and it's really helped us out a lot. This is an 1858 map, very vague, but it's what it is today still. I mean, they, they really did a great job of laying out the lands. That dot where you are? Yes, that's the Burnett's right there. First settlers in town were was Cyrus Rice. And as you can see, the airfield is online and highlighted in blue. Just above there, there's a landmark with his first work, uh, foundation. He lived in that for uh, four or five years or so. I'm not sure the exact amount of time. It wasn't much of a house, and he moved it farther up the hill, more into Conway, to a better location. <coughs> and there you can see the Barnbrook Road. Okay, this is the road coming up to the Coles property, which is in Deerfield but they go back into Conway. Mm -hmm. And probably this was the first road up into Conway from Deerfield, where Cyrus Rice settled. Mm -hmm. It's a private driveway okay. to the, the Coles people uh, property. Uh, they have a lot of lumber crop they okay. do up in there. Is that what you see from 116, where the lot of lumber is just Exactly, there? yes. It's it's a, farm it's, it's after you get into the Sardano Woods above the Karskis. Okay, now it's in Conway, and the road forks, road to the left, road to the right. One to the left was where their first foundation was, gets a short distance out, and then the second foundation's on the road to the right. That's the first foundation. Nothing much more than a hole in the ground. Huh. You know, you, there's not really a laid up foundation. It, it was really hard to find. We, I shouldn't say that. Other people knew where it was, so we were led to it. I was talking to the landowners, and they said, most foundations that we find will find a well with the foundation. And they said, well, there's no, no well here. And I started down on hands and knees crawling around. What do I find but a stone? And underneath the stone was the well that they never realized was there. So I'm pretty proud to find that for them. And this is looking up the hill just out of sight of that foundation, basically. And that's where the second foundation of the first settlement was. And that is... Uh, yeah, Ruth Osgood from East Kinney Road, grew up in East Kinney Road in Conway. But she was a direct descendant from Cyrus Rice. So when we went on the block, she came with us and got to see her family's original homestead. And then this is the second foundation. There's still some of the walls retained, still there. All right, now we're on the... 1871 map is a little bit clearer than the 1858. Okay, the blue dot there is, is Barnett's, and then Poplar Hill would be down in this corner towards the 1871. And that's how they got to was in almost a direct straight line. Okay, this is the transcription of the layout of the road. I know you can't read it, but you can see, you know, you had to go with the handwriting. And someone had gone through and typed out the layout. And of course, it's to this tree or that tree, which is no longer there. So it's a guessing game. Yeah. You kind of have to go, and there's places you can see the remnants of the road, and there's places you have to go a few hundred yards to find it again. It's okay, it goes between here and there. So it's a lot of work even before we get into the woods to just look at the old layouts and, and transcribe them and figure them out. And this goes on saying, you know, how it's laid out and it's kind of rough drawn. Okay, this is, again, the cat's map, you know, the property lines are overlaid on the top of the map. The blue line is an actual GPS track that we walked and laid out onto where the road was, presumably where the road was. We might not be on 100%, but we're pretty darn certain we're right where the road goes. And so down in the bottom part would be Waitley, and this would be your 
The straight line would be the Poplar Hill Road going down up through into Conway. And then meanders off off of uh, Roarbrook Road, follows May, uh, Waitley Road for a short distance, and then cuts through the woods on non existent roads now. Oh, wow. We can see it, right? And then this is a 1794 map showing where the road was. And as you can see, it's pretty darn close to what our GPS layout is. Okay, now the road was laid out from Ashfield to Waitley. So now we're in, in Ashfield on the Burnett Farm. And this is our field, we call it the, the North Flat, because it's on the north part of the farm. And so we're in Ashfield, go ahead, Tina. And this was where the old road, road was. Oh, oh my. This is a picture taken around 1927, I believe, so I can see by the addition on the barn. But this was the original homestead that we bought in 1781. And like I said, we believe the house was probably there prior to us buying it. And the road went right between, in front of the house, between the, the shed there. Goes across that field, where you can see where it turns to the left. There's a stone bridge there that was put in for to cross the wet area. Next slide. Uh, uh, this was taken in oh, about 1968, 69. My grandfather, myself. This <laughs> <laughs> a picture we stumbled onto it. I just love it. So that's the color of right my grandfather. He was just, you know, just like that all the time. Cute. All right. Next slide. Okay, now we're across the line, we're in Conway. And the group of trees there is the Burnett Cemetery. There's the family cemetery on the property. I, think there's, I wrote it down. I think there's like 13 grave sites on there from like 1830 to uh, the last one was 1908. One of my great grandfather's wife. And here's some of the stones that it's in pretty rough shape. They're falling down and cracked as any old cemetery is. It has a really been a lot of maintenance to it. Then in that here overview picture I showed with the second building where the road kind of turned, that's the farm that we operate now that was bought in 1926, added on to the existing farm along with other property that we bought before. But in this dry part of the summer or certain times of year, you can make out a foundation in line in the in the lawn. And I think it was 1883, they built a new house and moved everything from the old house to the, to the new house. And you can still see the remnants of the, of the foundation in that lawn. And then cross the river, continue up to the woods. I don't have any pictures of that. It's just within sight of the farm. And we're, now we're on North Poland Road, which turns off 116 right by the Burnett Sugar House. And this is about a oh, half mile up the road. And this is a, the Art Roads property that I remember as. And then uh, Ambassador Bullitt ended up buying the property in the 1950s. And now the trustees of the reservations owns this property. But there was a house where that group of trees is to the left of the telephone pole. And that's a picture of the house, and I don't have the date. The house, they tore down. Yes. And then the barn, there was a barn with it, and that burned down in 1970, 1968, somewhere along in that time frame. Here's a well that they used, uh, it's been an improved well, you can see the cement and everything. And, but they used, they had cattle on the property, so they needed a big supply of water for all the cattle. So this is just across the road up into the woods a little bit. Alright, now we're into the middle of the woods. But you can see, right along in, in that section there, the flat, that's the old road. And there's a stone wall on the right hand side of that. Okay. And that's, the division line between the uh, Bullet Estate, which is now Trustees of Reservations, mm -hmm. and the uh, State Wildlife Management Area, Bullet <coughs> Wildlife Management Area. Mm -hmm. This is one of our members of the Historical Commission, and we were looking for a foundation, and she said, well, what's this? And it was just a hole on the ground. It was on our property, and all the years I've been there, yes. I never knew it was a foundation. <laughs> and so we started looking around and found some brick, you know, that's, that's a real indicator when you start seeing a brick, you know. Then you know you've got a house, most likely have a house. A barn usually didn't have much for brick for any foundation work. But you see remnants of the chimney. 
This is the same, as you can see, it's just a little hole in the ground that was taken in the winter. And this is Peter Friesland from, from Conway. And his grandfather, I believe, was a foster child of the family that owned this property. It was a Salisbury was the name. And at this location, the first uh, church meetings for the Baptist church were held, because they didn't have a church. And a lot of this section of town were Baptists, so this is where the church was. All right, there's a, a pew deed to Daniel Burmett, my great-great-grandfather, for pew number seven, yeah. I think it's even half of pew number seven. And, but they, that was after the church was, was built down in Conway. But it gets kind of tied in with the property, so we finally put that in. This is the deed, 1791, I believe. This land uh, got taken for non-payment of taxes, or non-payment, it was a, a bill that someone owed to a person. And so to get paid, his land was taken for payment. The man that ended up with it was John Hancock. Yep, 40, 40 some odd acres, I forget what it was now. But, and actually he died and his wife ended up selling this. But there's like 45 acres of the part of the farm property that was owned by John Hancock. Mm -hmm. That it wasn't our will. <laughs> <laughs> that we never, never knew until we started doing this research of the deeds and everything. So it's been an interesting, eye-opening project. Wow. All right, that's continuing on back more to the Oh, well, it's kind of southeast. And there again, you can see the, the kind of stone wall on the right and the roadway going up through. It's just kind of a little indentation. Now we're getting up towards Main Poland Road, and this is um, Lucius Bond. That's what it is, Lucius Bond Foundation. And that was off just uh, to the west of the current Main Poland Road in the wildlife management area. And in the older growth, you can see you know, a lot of uh, Multi-floor rose bushes and everything. Yeah, there's the foundation growing in with the, the brush and everything. Mm -hmm. And there again, like I said, most of these foundations we find bricks from the chimney. And a lot of them, you don't find many, because I think they, I, in fact, I know for a fact, I've been told this from someone who did it, they go to old foundations and they take the bricks and use them in their own homes back in 50, 60, 100 years ago. All right. Now we're headed up towards Main Poland Road. This is characteristic of a lot of the county roads. We have stone wall on each side of the road. And previous to this, there was only one stone wall, but now we're going up through and there's the two stone walls. This is the current main Poland road. So the road is kind of going to the southeast, now it turns to directly south for about a quarter of a mile or so to another foundation. This was the Risley Foundation. I'm not sure how many years they were there, but. There again, uh, it's been a collection of road rubble. You know, it's easy to put it here and then in the dump. So you can see remnants of that. At this point, the road then did a 90 degree turn and we headed due east up the hill, up Smith Hill. And there is a property up there with a summer home on it. So this is a fairly well maintained section. <coughs> yeah, there you can see the, the road is still visible. You have to look, but you, you still visible. Mm -hmm. At the top of the hill, there's another foundation. I mean, there's foundations everywhere when you start looking. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is at the top of the hill, and in the layout of the road, it talks about the high point of the, of the road. And this is the high point. And then the road starts to go downhill, come down to the Crittenden Foundation. Mm -hmm. And this is getting over into the Conway State Forest, Cricket Hill section. And the Crenshaws, there were, I believe, seven sons. So there's many remnants of, the, of their family's foundations in there. But there were small parcels, and it was, it was a hard life. They didn't have good land and everything. So they, a lot of them ended up moving again to Phelps, New York. I don't know what the connection is, but it keeps coming up, coming up in our research, Phelps, New York. All right, this is the road that continues on, kind of turns to the east, uh, south, southeast and goes towards the four corners out in the state forest. Across that pond, beaver pond, is a road uh, somewhere. But that's from the four corners, and that road continues up to Old Cricket Road, Hill Road in Conway, to the 
comes back down through by the town transfer station. And but the beavers have really gotten that road gone. There are foundations on the other side of that that pond. There's like two or three more foundations up there. But that that branched off from the 1766 road. This is after four corners. As you can see, the four wheelers like to run the roads and have washed out a lot of sections of it. Now we're up to the Hangard Cemetery on Andre Hill. And this is uh, Malachi Maynard, his grave site. And he was um, got a flag for his service as a Minuteman in Conway. And he was one of two men from Conway who represented at the state convention on ratifying the federal constitution in 1788, a year after the Shays Rebellion. This is a copy of a letter that was written in 1788 to the Hampshire Gazette explaining their reasons to vote against it, the adoption of the federal constitution, because of the views on slavery. During the 250th, we had a celebration of a walk up to the old town farm. And so we've got signs up there. That's why, why you don't find them normally, but they were there. One other story with my, uh, Malachi Maynard is he bought from Hatfield in bags 19 shad and two pigs of considerable size. <laughs> he rested at midnight at the top of Popple Hill, leaning against a tree, fearing to remove his load lest he could not replace it. This is from the 1917 history of Conway. And I think it was about three miles that he had walked. <laughs> you know, he just rested a while and then he continued on up onto Cricket Hill. Okay, this is still off in the, uh, around the town farm area. Yeah, there's the foundation of the uh, Maynard property, which became the town farm in later years. The trees growing up through the foundations now. Okay, now we're headed downhill a bit out of the, from the center of the uh, state forest, and heading down towards um, Cricket Hill Road, oh. the current Cricket Hill Road. Mm. Yeah. Crittenden clan, like I said, there was like seven, seven sons. And this whole area is just um, all kinds of little breakups. Yeah, this is some of the deed research that has been done and where all the different properties are. This is out in the vicinity of Phelps, New York. It's not, I don't think it's in Phelps, but um, Jim Crittenden was a descendant of uh, Samuel Crittenden. <clears throat> he came out in, for the 250th celebration and got a chance to go to his family's foundations. He'd never been to Conway before. Mm -hmm. And he sent us this picture of this monument in New York. Mm -hmm. There was a schoolhouse up on top for this district. You know, towns had schoolhouses all over those sections of town. But we have a hard time finding the foundations. And what we've come to realize is they really didn't have a foundation. Oh, yeah. They'd have just some stone pillars to set it on. And then when the people moved out and the school was no longer needed, it probably got torn down and they took the stones and moved on and used them in other locations. But we were racking our brain trying to find this foundation. We never found it. We, we know pretty certain by the <coughs> deed layout of where it is. That's just another sign that we use for our... And then this is near the, the school foundation and it starts going down and made it noted here. I think it was 13 steeples that could be seen from the height of this location with no trees. And they could see 13 steeples around the surrounding towns. Now we're headed down to Kirk Hill Road. You can just see it in the distance. Now we're headed down back to the east and with Kirk Hill Cemetery right there on the right. The road now turns to the left, but you can see in this picture to the opening in the, to the right or parallel with the cemetery, and that's the old county road right there. This is a possible foundation of the Mantors and Mantor family. Daniel was a surveyor, he surveyed a lot of these properties and everything, and died at a very young age, which was common back in the day. Now we're working down through, this is a Rarn Brook, and we're headed towards the, the Waiting Road. Nice. Mm. And there again, you can see the road is still barely visible in, in many places. It was hard up on from Smith Hill down through to the Four Corners to 
you could see the road, but you couldn't get through the road because the tornado went through there and it, it made a real mess. Now we're approaching uh, Waite Road, the paved road now. And this is Bob Nowak, who owns right to, uh, across from Roarbrook Road, and he eats cattle. <laughs> Along his property there, you can see the, the current Waitley Road, but where that power line goes through, that's where the road veered off. It just does not go where Roarbrook goes now. It was back to the north a little bit. You get down in there, it's a real wet area, but there's a stone bridge that we found. And it's listed in the layout. There it is. Wow. And then this went to Ebenezer Alice's house, which is still standing there. The current location is um, Roy Cohen lives there now. And that's a picture of the old house. And that's a picture of the current house. It's had some alterations, but it's still the original foundation. The well for the house is still in the basement of the house. It's stone. I've got a picture I forgot to put in. A lot of the uh, springs that we find are wells. We've seen them 15, 20 feet deep, maybe two or three feet wide, all laid up stone. They're beautiful. And most of them don't have any water in them. And one theory that we've been told about the possibility is that back in the day there weren't any trees. So the groundwater was higher. And now with all the trees, it, it takes down the water, and so these springs have gone dry. Uh, this is uh, Roarnbrook Road, right, right at the end of Poplar Hill. Okay, now we're working up onto Poplar Hill, and looking off to the east, and um, Mike Kirkalonis. Uh, this is his property. It's just a beautiful view looking up towards uh, Deerfield. And then this is um, past his house, headed down the hill a bit into or towards Waitley. And we're looking for a foundation in this location. Okay, and this is another property layout of Poplar Hill Road and the surrounding properties. And down in the back up, please, in the bottom, right on the Conway, the uh, Hatfield line or Waitley line, that gore, there was a parcel of land that was unclaimed when they, when they settled the town. And it was an error, kind of like a surveying error. And so we find that a lot of references to the gore in our deeds, research, and everything. All right, here's the foundation we have found. And it's near the Waiting Town line. Bricks, telltale sign. The old bricks, they were larger than the bricks nowadays. And handmade. It's kind of interesting seeing these old ones like this. This, we believe, was a root cellar built down into the foundation. It's Bob Nowak and myself, and we didn't find any critters, thankfully, but <laughs> you kind of wonder sometimes. Yeah, this is not Bob Nowak, no, it's the Damon Foundation, or house. That's Victor Bartles. <laughs> that was uh, my grandmother's uncle, Uncle Vic. This is a picture, I actually brought the original picture here. But this was taken down by the West Whitley Reservoir. It's not on 1766 Road, but I just thought it was a kind of a cool picture. And it was a Rufus weight to our knowledge. And it would be a my, I get this correct, my grandmother's <coughs> grandfather on her mother on her mother's side. It looks like kind of like a rough life. <laughs> okay, this is a picture taken at the <coughs> farmhouse back to our place. My grandmother and grandfather down at the bottom with my dad sitting in my grandmother's lap. And then my grandfather on my on my on my great grandfather on my grandfather's side. And then Wilson Bardwell and Murdy Sanderson Bardwell from Waitley, mm -hmm. and Lyman Sanderson, and uh, Hattie, she was, that's where our weight connection comes in. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ruby and Murdy uh, and Wilson, 
lived in the house that I had. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, a lot of connections here. This, this whole project just turned into an amazing event. Because after doing it for a while, I suddenly realized my grandmother was raised in Waitley on Poplar Road. How did my grandfather get to see her by the 1766 road? Probably on foot or horse. So, so Yes, Ruby right. Christine. And Wilson was uh, Victor's nephew. Okay. And Ed was the brother. Ed? Okay, yes. Ed, and, Ed was brother. Yeah. Yeah. and so it, it just was such an interesting thing to all of a sudden realize that, wow, this is where my grandfather used to travel. So part of the project is I went, took my daughter, and we walked from the farmhouse <laughs> out through to when West Whitley, we ended up at the West Whitley Capitol. Wow. Next slide. Wow. That's Ruby there, I believe, before she was married. Pretty woman. And I'm not sure where the picture was taken, but I would assume at her homestead. And I've got a, a wedding picture of her wearing a brooch. And we've got a picture of her mother wearing that brooch. Mm. And I have the brooch. Oh, wow. wow. Stumbled onto it. I didn't know we had that. Wow. Next slide. There's my daughter. I just put that in there because she was part of this whole project. She's up to the University of New Hampshire, so we don't see much of her, but this happened in the summer and we had a great trip. Next slide. And then we thought it was kind of fitting to end here at the West Whitney Chapel. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.